Hi everybody, Dan Bailey here with some more Fujifilm camera tips for you. Before I get started, I just want to take a minute and say thank you to all you guys who have taken the time to watch my videos, leave comments, and subscribe to my channel here. This has been a really weird time indeed, and normally this time of year I'd be out doing mini workshops and teaching classes and, and giving talks at camera stores uh, and photography events around the country, uh, but obviously that's not happening right now and I'm not sure when it's going to happen again. But in the meantime, I'm excited that I can at least get these videos up and share my enthusiasm and my expertise with you guys about photography and uh, hopefully inspire you guys to get out and keep practicing your creativity and taking photos. I feel that it's vital right now for all of us to keep actively engaged with our creativity uh, and our self-nurturing pursuits like photography. I've long held the belief that creativity is one of the main things that can uh, save us as a species uh, and also help us move forward as a society. And in, in, throughout history, that's always been the case. In the past couple of years, I've worked really hard to spread that creative message out in the world because uh, I feel it's really vital for us, especially right now. So I hope that these lessons continue to inspire you to get out and practice your own creativity, and hopefully they'll keep you a little more sane during this weird and uncertain time. In my previous two videos, I've talked about ways that you can retain this on-the-scene magic in your camera by using some of the built-in creative tools that are found in your Fuji cameras. With controls like highlight and shadow tone, color, noise reduction, sharpness, grain, uh, color chrome effect, the warm, cool black and white adjustments, uh, there are so many different ways that you can adjust your scene right in the camera, uh, and then you throw in the film simulations, and you have a huge amount of creative variation with which to explore your subjects. A lot of times you can get by without having to shoot raw and still get wonderful looking photos that have a very individual stylized look to them that match your own creativity. And isn't that what this is all about anyway? Isn't that what you're trying to go for with your photography? But what if you are shooting in RAW? I know a lot of you guys have commented on the past couple of videos and asked me if these settings apply to RAW or what happens when you shoot in RAW plus JPEG. And so in this lesson, I'm gonna cover exactly that topic and show you yet another tool that you can use to help maximize your creative flexibility when you're shooting with the Fujis. All of the X-Series cameras have a raw conversion setting found in the playback menu. And this allows you to create JPEG versions of, the, of your raw files right inside the camera. In fact, this setting was found in the original X100 and it's been included in every single model since then. It's actually a pretty powerful setting. In fact, one time I asked Billy from the Fuji guys what raw processing software he prefers to use and his answer was the camera. The real power of this tool is that you can apply any number of settings to the JPEG that you create from your raw file right in the camera. During the conversion, you can adjust the highlight and shadow tone, you can adjust exposure, you can apply color chrome effect, you can change the film simulation, you can adjust sharpening and color. You can even adjust the white balance or choose a different color space. If you watched my last video, then all of these tools will probably sound familiar to you because they're exactly the same. The raw conversion process uses the exact same process However, instead of applying these tools and settings to your JPEGs while you're shooting, you can apply them to your RAW file after the fact to create a brand new JPEG. For example, what if you're on location and you shot a beautiful vibrant scene using the Velvia film simulation in order to capture those rich bold tones in the sky and the landscape? Now you might love how this looks, but maybe you're curious and you're wondering, well what would this look like if I'd shot it in Acros or Eterna? What if I had used shade white balance instead of the default setting? Maybe you'd like to bring down the highlights a little bit, or open up the shadows, or add a little bit of grain. Using the raw conversion panel, you can do any one of these things, or all of them, or anything in combination, whatever way that you choose. You can even adjust your overall exposure of the scene using the push-pull processing option, and this allows you to brighten or darken the entire image by up to three stops over and two stops under. And since we already know the Fujis have a huge amount of latitude in the raw files, this can make a huge difference in how the photo looks. You can actually preserve a great deal of shadow detail or rescue highlights that you thought were lost. Combine that with a highlight or shadow tone adjustment and you have even more ability to control or manage the overall contrast levels in your scene. What if you'd like to see one version as black and white, one with darker shadows, and one with a little bit of graying added? Well, you can do that. In fact, you can do as many conversions as you want from the same file with as, as I said, with as many combinations of settings as you want, and each one gets saved as a new JPEG on the end of your memory card. This is particularly useful if you're a photographer who likes to shoot in RAW only, 
but you want to share your photos or transport them to your phone or tablet using the Fujifilm camera remote app. This way you can select and convert only the raw files that you want to transfer to your phone uh, instead of having to shoot every single image in raw plus JPEG, which gives you a redundancy that you may not actually need. So using all of these possible options, you have a huge amount of creative flexibility for creating new looks and coming up with individual styles for your photography. So here's how it works. It's actually very simple. To make the conversion, simply play back your selected image, then hit OK or press in the joystick, and you'll bring up the playback menu. And you'll see the raw conversion menu item right there. It's probably the first or second item from the top. Once you're there, you'll be able to see all the adjustments you can make. So go ahead and make your changes, then simply hit the Q button to bring up a preview of your image with all the changes added. If you like the way it looks, then hit OK again. It'll store the Fuji quality JPEG right to the end of your card. Or you can cancel it out by hitting the back button and start over or modify your changes. It's really as easy as that, simple as a bowl full of ice cream. Unfortunately, you can't actually see the real-time changes that you're making to your image like you do when you're adjusting these in shooting mode. You'll only see the final preview of your changes when you hit the Q button. But again, you can always cancel out and, and redo the changes or make adjustments, uh, and you'll always have your original raw file. Nothing's ever changed with that. And you obviously don't have the same level of precise control for making fine-tuning adjustments like you do if you were sliding sliders in Lightroom, but you have the flexibility to do it anywhere, right on location. And you'll still have the same raw file. You can always go back and throw that into Lightroom and edit further when you get home. So in this way, you could use your camera's raw conversion tool to try out different ideas, maybe as a scratch pad, to give you some uh, creative inspiration for how you might want to process the photos later. Then when you get home, you could use your JPEGs as reference to take those even further in your processing software. Or if you like the way they look, you simply keep those as your final images. They're certainly good enough. They're Fuji quality JPEGs. And we all know how awesome those look, right? So no matter how you use this tool, whether it's a standalone for you, or whether you use it in conjunction with your other software, or in addition to your other software, it just adds one more component for increased flexibility and creative options when shooting with your Fuji. And there's one thing that you should know. You can always take your original RAW file, put it back on a memory card, stick the card back in your camera. As long as it's the same camera that you used to shoot the photo in the first place, uh, your Fuji will recognize that as a RAW file, and you'll be able to play it back and do the RAW conversions again, just like as if you were shooting the photo right now. Okay, now that I've shown you how this works, Let's talk about some of the other advantages this method gives you uh, and why you might want to take this approach instead of just processing everything with your software on your computer at home. Raw files from the Fuji cameras contain a ton of color and tonal information. And if you don't have a really fast computer, it can actually take a while for them to open up into your raw processing software. I'm sure that every one of you has lost hours of your precious lives just waiting for your software to demosaic that big raw file. And what if you have a thousand raw files to deal with? That's a lot of time waiting, let alone the time it takes to actually convert them all and process. By using your camera's processor and doing your conversions right there on location, or on the train, or the plane, or the bus station, or wherever, you can save some of that time that would otherwise be spent at home processing your images. While most software does a pretty good job these days, even Lightroom, some photographers are still unhappy with the ways that Adobe programs handle the Xtrans raw files, and create this kind of smudgy watercolory look to fine details like leaves and foliage and skin and hair. By contrast, the processor inside the camera does an amazing job. It works better than any software, simply because the processing algorithms that were written to demosaic the Xtrans files were written by the very same people who created the Fuji raw files in the first place. If you're a Fuji shooter, you probably already know how awesome the JPEGs look right out of the camera. So how do you think a Fuji JPEG that's converted from their own RAW file using their own technology is going to look? As I've said, using programs like Lightroom and Photoshop, Capture One, Luminar, any of these programs have a huge amount of processing flexibility uh, that gives you an infinite number of possibilities when you're processing your images. When you're processing in camera, you're limited to your Fuji-specific adjustments, like color, highlight tone, shadow tone, sharpness, grain, color chrome effect, things like that. Now, while that might seem limiting, uh, you can look at those as presets, you know, Fuji-branded presets. I know a lot of photographers out there who actually use third-party preset packs, 
with Photoshop and Lightroom and even Luminar. So just think of these as official Fuji branded presets. And that brings me to my next point. If you shoot RAW, then you're at the mercy of whatever software you use to demosaic your Fuji RAW files and try to get the color right. The color is a very subjective thing, and there's always going to be minor discrepancies or sometimes major discrepancies when you start crossing devices and crossing mediums. In addition, RAW conversions are subjective as well. Extrapolating sensor data and converting that to an actual image is not a perfect process. There's always some interpretations going on in there, especially when it comes to color, and that's why each software has its own standard color profile. And when you upload a RAW file to your software, in almost every case, the software is going to trash the Fujifilm simulation you used and replace that with its own default color profile. So when it comes to reproducing the Fuji colors exactly, uh, no other program is going to get it right like Fuji can. And, and that's simply because it's their profiles and they don't share them with anybody. It's like the Coke recipe. Coke doesn't share their profiles with other software manufacturers. It's their intellectual property. It's their company legacy. It's their secret recipe. And they keep those recipes safe. They don't just give them out to Adobe and Capture One. Yeah, Capture One and Adobe have emulations of the Fuji color profiles that usually look pretty good, but they're never going to be exact. So bottom line, this is why many Fuji photographers are a little frustrated when they see color inconsistencies between what they shot with their Fuji film profiles and what they see on the screen when they upload the raw file. And again, this is where doing the in-camera conversions will give you exact results. You're letting Fuji demosaic their own files and applying their own exact color recipes. Okay, now that I've said all this, you should know that Fuji actually has their own raw conversion program called Fujifilm X Raw Studio. And it's actually a pretty cool program because it takes a different approach than the other ones do. Using X Raw Studio, you're essentially doing your conversions just like you would in the camera. And in fact, it actually uses the camera's processor to do the actual conversions. You hook your computer up to the actual X series camera with a USB cable, and you're letting the camera's engine do the conversions but you're seeing the results on the screen. And this is pretty cool because you can actually see them in real time and you can browse uh, folders of raw files that are already on your computer. You're not limited to the pictures that are on your memory card. And the best thing about XRAW Studio is that it's a free program. You can download it right from their site. And it works with just about every newer Fuji model from X-T2 and later. I'll talk more about XRAW Studio in a future lesson, uh, but for now, it's definitely worth checking out. So I'm gonna end the lesson here. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this tutorial. Hope you found it useful. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment. Love hearing from you guys. Also, check out my, my best-selling Fuji guidebook, X-Series Unlimited. It tells you everything you need to know in order to get the best results from your Fuji camera. Find me on social media and Patreon at Dan Bailey Photo, and you can check out my website and blog as well. So again, thanks for watching. Take care. Stay sane. Stay safe. Uh, have fun with your camera out there, and I'll see you next time.